it's, the houses are beautiful here. Yeah. In my estimation. Yeah, nice they're, houses. They're well. one. Hey. I'd like to take another uh, opportunity to thank my mother, who this is a. Uh, the scope of this documentary is about my mom. Um, my mom and dad were very good parents. We grew up in Spanish Lake, working class background. Also, my mom was from Malton, so we spent a lot of time visiting my grandparents. But a special tribute to my mom and my late father, and this is for you. My name is Bill Brown. I'm one of the brothers and my job is client intake here at Brown & Brown. I'd like to take a few minutes and tell you about our mother, Janice Brown. I'll start from the beginning. She's originally from Alton, Illinois, where she attended St. Mary's Elementary School and Marquette High, where she was class of 1954. She then went on to St. Louis University where she majored in elementary education. It was there she met our father, Charles. After four years in the Navy, they then returned to St. Louis where they raised our family. But here we are in front of Twillman Elementary School, right behind us, and um... yep. I remember taking them to school here in the morning, Twillman School. This is first where we through uh, sixth grade. Yes, first both of us. Yeah. And do you I remember your teachers. I do. I'll go Miss French, Mrs. Rathert, Miss Klosterman, God rest her soul. Then we had Miss Wallemeyer, uh, Mr. Reynolds, and Mr. Bryan. And I had uh, yes. Mrs. Grafey. Uh, Mr. Hader, Miss Brown, that was at Laramore because we got transferred for one That's year. That's right, for one year. Uh, yes. Mrs. Jenkins, yes. Mr. Sims for fifth grade, and Mr. Bryant for sixth grade. So if any of the teachers are out there and watching this, please give us a call. We'd like to know or what's going families. on. Or their families. Our Lady of the Rosary Catholic Church was known as Our Lady of Loretta. Catholic Church. It's a great, great parish. All four of our sons made their first communion and their confirmation here at Loretta School, which is down the Redmond Road here. And anyway, you went to Hazelwood East. Right when it was starting up. And I was the first, from Central. first class there that from the new school. So my mom grew up in Alton, and yes. how many generations do we have here, Mother? My family's been here seven generations in the St. Louis area. Um, my great-great-grandfather bought a house in downtown St. Louis at 70 West Mound Street in 1845. He and his wife were from England and they had a large family. St. Louis became not the place to live in 1847 or 48. The cholera epidemic. The cholera epidemic, that was it. And they decided to move, and they moved to Alton, Illinois, where they said it was healthier for their large family of children. So that's how I came to grow up in Alton. If you've been hurt on a job or hurt in an auto accident, I probably know what you're thinking. Maybe I can deal with the insurance company on my own. But remember, the insurance companies have a staff of professionals working for them. You should have a staff of professionals working for you. Missouri, dial all threes, 333-3333. In Illinois, dial all eights, 888-8888. And at Brown & Brown, if you can't come to us, we'll come to you.
Hello, here we are with our beloved mother again, and we're standing in front of the Chain of Rocks Bridge. And memories of this Chain of Rock Bridge, the flood of 73, the flood of 93, and Ed driving his car off the bridge. And what we're gonna do is go back 10 years, take a look at what we were like 10 years ago. Hi, Dan and Ed Brown here at Brown and & Brown, and here we are standing in front of the old Chain of Rocks Bridge. And being from North County, we have a lot of memories about this bridge. When we were kids and used to go over to our grandparents' home, we used to go across this bridge before the new one right down the river was built. Um, I remember in 1973, during the Great Flood, we call it the Great Flood, but since then we've had another Great Flood in 1993, I believe it was. But in 73, when we were kids, we used to ride our bikes across here. And it was amazing. I mean, how the water, how far up it came. Um, a lot of good memories about this bridge. There's some uh, fishing on the other end. We called it the rocks. And during high school, that was a hangout for parties on Fridays and Saturday nights until the Madison County Sheriff's Department figured it out and started coming down. And the parties were no longer encouraged, let's say. We grew up next to Route 66, which was the main artery in America. We had a very American upbringing. It was full of swimming pools. As a matter of fact, North Shore Country Club was not far from here. About a five minute walk. They called it a country club, but it wasn't much of a country club. Just some families and a few children. Then we come over here to the bridge when we were older and we'd hang out, sit on the bridge with our legs over the side, looking into the Mississippi River as it rolled down to New Orleans. It's kind of a Huck Finn, Tom Sawyer childhood with a river that ran right through it. So it was great growing up up here and it brings back a lot of nice memories. Chain of Rocks Amusement Park was up the hill there, so we'd ride the, the, uh, the River Rat. It was this roller coaster that kind of came out and came out over the, the hill there and you get a nice view of the bluffs and the river and the waterworks. And they had a swimming pool too that uh, I think we'd sneak into every once in a while. Of course, you'd have to sneak into the whole park. As long as you could... Uh, pretend like you belonged. You could uh, run around and ride all the rides and it's good being a little kid. You kind of get a lot of breaks in life. Kind of, the kind of breaks you don't get when you're older. I didn't actually drive off the bridge. <laughs> you can ride your bike across or walk across. Look out over the water. It's really beautiful in the winter time. You see the ice flows coming down the Mississippi. It's really something to see. This is the middle of the famous Chain of Rocks Bridge in North St. Louis. And behind us, you see the uh, tower where the water comes from in the entire city of St. Louis. The waterworks are a little bit down the river here. And the uh, water's pretty muddy, so they have to filter out all the mud and the grit and the soot and everything else. And uh, this is the famous Mississippi River. This is why St. Louis is here and this is why we are here. The bridge is for, I think it was built in about 1928 and they had a big curve right in the middle of the bridge. And when I was a kid, I do remember my parents, they used to have a toll booth at the very beginning of the bridge and they would have to pay, I think it was a nickel toll, and we would drive across the bridge to get on to Illinois. The North Shore Country Club was just on the other side of the river here, the highway, and Mom used to take us to North Shore. You remember that? What was that like? Yes, yes, that was a very nice pool over there, a nice club. And I remember when Twillman School, your elementary school, would have their picnic once a year at Chain of Rocks Park. Which is up on top of the hill. Right, and 
and like the bumper cars. <laughs> oh, he could have stayed on those all day. Dan liked the high dive at the swimming pool. And what was the other one you liked? The Mad Max. It was a roller coaster that went out over the edge of the cliff and come around and come back up. And when I was a kid, I would come over from Alton, Illinois, and my favorite at the amusement park was the fortune teller lady. Yeah. <laughs> Give you a card with your fortune on it. <laughs> When somebody's happy, when somebody calls, I get letters. It, that's really nice. I enjoy that when somebody writes me a letter and says, I really appreciate what you did. You went the extra mile. Thank you cards. Um, I really enjoy that. That's, that's a lot of fun. I have a desk full of them. If I wasn't frozen to the seat, I'd turn around and show them to you. But uh, maybe after the end of the shoot, <laughs> I'll show you a few of them. <laughs> have you been hurt in a car accident? Don't take on a giant insurance company. And all their attorneys. On your own. Call Brown & Brown and get your car fixed right. Call Brown & Brown and get a rental car. Call Brown & Brown and get compensated for your injuries. In Missouri, dial all threes, 333-3333. In Illinois, dial all eights, 888-8888. And at Brown & Brown, if you can't come to us, we'll come to you. Call now. What does it mean to be an attorney? I will say it means uh, helping, it means um, people are in trouble, it means getting in there and doing things that you would do for yourself if you knew how. Um, I get in there and I fix legal problems. If you had a problem with your faucet, you'd call a plumber. If you had a problem with your furnace, you'd call a heating and air conditioning guy. If you have a legal problem, you call me because I know what I'm doing like the other gentlemen. So you get in there, you, you do the job, you fix it, you help the people, and then you hopefully get more business down the road from other people that need an attorney. Somebody once asked me, what's my passion with the law? My passion is to help people. We really have a sincere desire to help our clients. And that takes a lot of time. For example, last week I probably worked over 70 hours. Why is that? Well, because A, I don't delegate everything because I want to make sure it's done and done right. And B, I want to make sure, first and foremost, somebody's taken care of. during the war, huh? Yes, I remember on the brick wall right up there was a, a big sign that said, Hitler stinks. <laughs> where? Where was it? <laughs> well, it was on the concrete wall up there. These houses weren't here at that time. And I could see it very clearly. And I was seven years old, I could read. So I thought, Hitler stinks right there. And I had to know about that. So what did uh, so, the house but look like back then? We came up here in 1943, and uh, the house looked very similar. We moved from down the street. I can remember riding my little two-wheel bicycle up here. And family, my mom, my dad, and my older brother, Dale. And my mother was so proud of this house. Bungalow, it was called back then. Bungalow it was from a, and like a Sears catalog. No, I, not, not this house wasn't, but the bungalow style house was very popular then, mm -hmm. and it was built in 1929. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were very, there, and you know, my parents lived here for um, uh, over 40 years. Over 40 years, they died in the early 80s. So the house was in the Stobbs family for over 40 years. Do you recall how much they paid for it when they moved in? No, Dan, I'm sorry, I don't. We played a lot at Haskell's Park, which is right here. Sure. Still and there. this yeah. area, this area is called Middletown. Middletown, Alton. Who lived next it door? It was a very you? nice place to grow up. We could walk to St. Mary's School, and um, Jacoby lived over there, and then another family, Malloy's, they've been there a long, long time. So 
Uh, it was a great neighborhood to grow up in. Is that house there next door? Yes, all these houses were here mm -hmm, when we moved in. And... Grandpa had his uh, swing up front. That's right. Did he put that in or was that here? What yes, we had a porch swing. It was very typical. 1940s, 1950s, people sat on the front porch. And read the paper. And read, read the, the newspaper and waved. Evening Telegraph. We had to wave to everybody who went by and they waved to us. <laughs> so... <laughs> much more of a pedestrian culture back then, right? People walked a lot more. Oh yes, on the sidewalks we would walk to the grocery store over there. Or we would walk all the way down, um, it was called Thrifty Drug at that time, down on Broadway, mm -hmm. to the drug store. And of course we walked to school and the bus came here and stopped right here. So we were right on the bus line, which was super great. I could get on the bus and ride to my piano lessons in Upper Alton or we could ride to downtown and shop. Now, how much was bus, bus fare back then? I think it was 10 cents. Maybe it was less and it went up to 10 cents. And I think they had a children's fare and then an adult fare. Have you been hurt in a car accident? Brown & Brown is here to help you. Thousands of people just like you are hurting from a serious accident. Brown & Brown. Attorneys born into the working class of St. Louis. Brown and Brown, we don't collect a dime unless you win. Brown and Brown, if you've been hurt in an accident. In Missouri, dial all threes. In Illinois, call our Fairview Heights office at all lanes. And at Brown and Brown, if you can't come to us, we'll come to you. Call now. Tell us about the old uh, radio shows you'd listen to in the evening. Well, when I would come home from grade school, my mother and I would listen to When a Girl Marries on the radio. <laughs> my mother liked that show, and I liked it too. And it then we had, the show after that was Portia Faces Life. <laughs> that was a soap so, opera? Yes, I think they were on for 15 minutes. And they were soap operas. My mother loved the soap operas. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then in the evening, of course, we had our shows. Um, Jack Benny. Oh, yes, that was a good one. Uh -huh. Bob Hope, he was on back then. Mm -hmm. When did you get and your first TV set? I think about 1953. Mm -hmm. There was Howdy Doody. About and years ago. Yeah, another radio show I forgot was um, Life with Judy. No, A Date with Judy. A Date with Judy was on on Saturday morning. That was my favorite. Oh, yeah. I had to listen to A Date with Judy. <laughs> now, are the Haskell family, that's who donated this park? Yes, Dr. Haskell. His house is up there. And in his will, it said the property could only be used for a park. Did they call him the, Al they called him the Alton Giant? The Alton Gentle Giant. Gentle Giant. Yes. Yes. Wasn't he almost nine feet tall, Ed? Eight feet, eleven and a half inches. Was he still growing when he died? Still growing when he died. Oh, my goodness. Mm hmm. No, can't reach him. I'll stand in front of him so you can see the scale here. Wow. I'd have trouble climbing him. I mean, that's how big the man is. Dan and Ed, and also Bill and Greg, all of them were smart growing up. They made good grades in school, and uh, teachers liked them. They joined a lot of things. They were real joiners. <laughs> Growing up years, you have your ups and downs. Put it that way, ups and downs. Maybe we had more ups than downs with them. But they all turned out wonderful, and the Brown & Brown Law Firm is, is just wonderful that they have it. So, uh, what can I say? Life is good. Life is good. Well, here we are at Haskell's Park, and a lot of fond memories here, and guess what? It's still an active place. That's really what's nice. The kids, uh, generation after generation, come here. So, here we are. I'm here with my brother, Ed. What memories do you have of Haskell Park? Oh, I have a lot of memories. I remember uh, the 
the old fire engine that we would climb all over and we'd throw rocks in the radiator and we'd come over here and we'd climb on everything. We'd climb on things we weren't supposed to climb on. We'd climb on top of the swings, the, the metal bars on the swings and uh, yeah, like Dan said, it's still a nice park and people bring their dogs and we brought our dog, Otis. He's a member of the family too. Yeah, this was a very nice place to grow up. Very just, uh, friendly, everybody. Just a nice neighborhood place. It's been here a hundred years and I'll be here a hundred more. Like I've said before, we grew up in St. Louis, but we consider Alton our second home. And it's a great environment, great place to raise a family and it's a beautiful day. What more can you ask for? Bakery on the corner of East 9th and Henry Streets in Alton. My grandfather and his brother bought this piece of property in about 1898 and started Stobbs Brothers Grocery Store here. For deliveries from here, they used a horse and buggy. Horse and buggy. Dukes, if you're ever willing to sell, we'd like to put it back in our family, okay? <laughs> One of the things that uh, we do at Brown & Brown is that when we say we'll come to you, we'll come to you. And for example, right now it's Saturday and it's two o'clock and here I am at a medical facility to come out to meet with the clients. And unfortunately somebody was badly hurt in a car accident. And what we're doing here is explaining to the clients their options and how we can help them. And like it or not, we're, this is what we do. And so I, I will say it again, if you can't come to us, we'll come to you. We filmed 10 years ago. And if you recall, and we'll show you my three daughters at the time. And they're cute and it was a great time in your life because they're totally reliant upon you and not a care in the world. And I always, I remember saying, what am I going to do when they get older? What are they going to do when they're 15, 17 and boys start lurking around? Help, because guess what? The time has come. Here they are now. What am I going to do? Help me out, <laughs> please. And if you're a young man, watch your manners around my daughters. I mean it. I enjoy doing things with my daughter. She likes to fish, so we fish as often as we can. This is... Uh... My daughter Anastasia, and she's in fifth grade. Sixth I'm grade. going in sixth. Oh, sixth grade, excuse me. So how'd you do in fifth grade? How'd you like it? It was hard. It was a lot harder in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What subjects do you like the best? Lunch. <laughs> Lunch. If you've been injured in a car wreck, I know what you're probably thinking. Perhaps I can deal with the insurance company on my own. But remember, the insurance company has a staff of professionals working for them. You should have a staff of professionals working for you. At Brown & Brown, we'll make sure your car is fixed right, make sure you get a rental, and make sure you get better. In Missouri, dial all threes, 333-3333. In Illinois, dial all eights, 888-8888. And at Brown & Brown, if you can't come to us, we'll come to you. Yes. Look at the, look at how huge it is. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they, call the, they call him the Alton Giant? The Alton Gentle Giant. The gentle Giant. Gentle Giant. Wasn't he almost nine feet tall, Ed? Eight feet, eleven and a half feet. Was he still growing when he died? Still growing when he died. So when he would walk, he would throw one foot in front of the other, and he had braces on his feet to support his feet, and he, uh, the braces cut into his foot, and which caused the blood illness before penicillin and, he, and everybody, this was before television, everybody in the little town would come out and they have pictures of people hanging off of roofs right. and trees and everybody wanted to see how big this guy was. Here we are in front of the grave of uh, Robert Wadlow. We went from the statue of the man to the grave of the man. One interesting aspect, you can see how long this grave is here. Yeah, it goes way out there, all the way to the, uh, almost to the street. And the reason why the mound comes up like that is because uh, he had one of the largest funerals in Alton history. And there were hundreds of people here uh, for his funeral. And after the funeral was open, over and 12 men lowered his coffin into the ground, 
they backed up a cement truck and they poured cement over the coffin and they put dirt over the cement to which causes the mound here. Uh, his father didn't want anybody ever disinterring him for any reason. He, Mom, uh, I understand that your uh, great grandfather is buried near here. Yes. Or our great grandfather, I should say. Great great grandfather. Yes, it would be your great great grandfather. My great grandfather, Joseph Stobbs, is buried about 200 yards down the little road here. Okay. And they used to own a grocery store? Was that where? Yes, at 9th and Henry. She's now Duke's Bakery? <laughs> now Duke's Bakery, yes. That was their grocery store from about 1900 to 1920 in that era. Mm -hmm. Yes. And would they just sell groceries or was it mostly or, or other supplies as groceries, well? Groceries, grocers, Stobbs grocers. Beer? Hars, horse and buggy, beer? they delivered, horse and buggy. <laughs> they delivered, yes. Yeah. This is St. Patrick's Cemetery in Godfrey, Illinois. My parents are buried here, Myrtle and John Stobbs. My dad died in 1984. My mother died in 1985. And God bless them. And happy Mother's Day, Mother. And happy Mother's Day to you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you, thank you. As you can see with my mom, we have a lot of ties with Alton, Illinois. She was born and raised here. And while we always consider St. Louis our hometown, you can think of Alton as kind of our next door neighbor here. We always have fond memories and it's a great place to be, a great place to live. And one of these days we'll probably be buried here too, somewhere right along here. I'm Dan Brown, and I'm the one without the eye patch. And I'm Ed Brown, and I'm the one without the eye patch, with the eye patch. No, I'm without the eye patch. Can you get this right? Uh, you wait are a minute. Here's the eye patch. See, I can't see the patch, so I don't know. 